I used a domino to create this. Uh, wait, I mean this. Welcome to an episode of Coding Things, where I try to code very random things. I want to procedurally generate a pattern from a game of dominoes that I grew up playing called Chicken Foot, and I thought the easiest way to do this would be to simulate the game of dominoes. Spoiler, it wasn't easy. Before I started creating dominoes, thankfully I asked, how many dominoes do I need? Using this formula, we can calculate how many in a set. For example, a double 15 set, where n is the highest number of pips, that gives us 136 dominoes. Nope. Ain't nobody got time for that. So how can I generate a set of dominoes? Well, odd dominoes have a pip in the center. Even dominoes do not. So I just need to map out the location of the pips and I can strategically place them so the index of the transforms aligns with the index of the current pip. And when I loop through each pip up to the value we need, I create the pip and assign it to the top or bottom transform. If value is odd, I simply set the pip to the transform position at the current index. If the value is even, I skip the first transform, or the center pip. Finally, if we're doing the bottom pips, then I just invert the transform positions. And you'll notice I'm only going up to 9 pips. We'll get to that later. So now I can create a set of dominoes. The amount of rows we have is equal to the double set value plus 1 because we include 0. The amount of dominoes per column is equal to the row index plus 1. I create the domino, grab the domino script, set the values, and then throw it in some dictionary so I can easily look that up later. Now I can generate sets up to a double nine with pips. And since I have a set of dominoes, we can try to play chicken foot. I start by creating four players to simply create more randomness with domino selection in play. If I don't have a container for the player game objects, I create one. And then for every player up to the total amount of players, in this case four, I create the player game object that will hold the dominoes. And then I shuffle the dominoes to each of the players while dominoes still exist in the domino container game object. For the game to start, I need to set the starting double domino. I'm going to steal the double domino from whatever player has it, using our dictionary we set up earlier, place it into the game, and make that domino active. To be able to make plays on a domino, I need to know where to place a domino. So my idea is to create connection transforms on a domino and then set the position and rotation of the connecting domino to that transform. And I'm strategically placing these connection transforms so the index aligns with the position enum I create in the domino class. Before I fully implement this logic, I'm going to start my play method and implement what I need as I go. Just a quick note, this is how you create spaghetti code. Anyway, I'll try to make this quick, but here's my first attempt in my play method where my idea was to play until I reach the total amount of dominoes in the set and then I keep track of the current active player, and I threw this logic into a method since I had it in other places as well. I grab a random domino from the active player, so if a double domino is in play, you have to play on that domino until all positions are filled. We get the double domino script. If the random domino I grabbed is a double as well, then I can't play that domino, so we'll move on to the next player. Otherwise, I grab a random free position that I can try to connect to on the current double domino, Finally, I tried to make a connection using another method that I'll explain later that handles the connection logic of two dominoes. If I can't connect, then I move on to the next domino. If I can, then I add the domino that was played to the active dominoes list so I can later make a play on that domino. Then I added a bunch of logs and tested out my early logic. And, of course, it didn't go well. And this is when I realized two main problems in my logic. One, I'm not checking if the player has a playable domino on their turn. I'm just grabbing a random domino from the player and trying to play it, which is incredibly inefficient. Two, I'm creating an infinite loop. I'm checking if the children in the transform is equal to the total dominoes in the set. But in Unity, the transforms are not updated until the last update frame. So I moved all that logic into my update method. Again, if I should be playing and the amount of dominoes played is less than the total amount of dominoes, then we keep trying to play. But this time, the transform will update the right count of children game objects. I grab the player transform, but this time I keep track of the playable dominoes that a player has, the domino we are trying to make a play on, and the play domino if we are able to play one. So let's focus on taking a turn when a double is in play, since that's the first domino we have to make a play on. I grab the domino script of the double domino currently in play, again using the dictionary we have for an easy lookup. I grab a list of the dominoes a player can play on the double domino, the get playable dominoes method I use takes the active player's transform and the domino currently being looked at, and I simply loop through every domino the player has, 
If I can make a play, I add the current domino to the list and then I return that list. My can make play method is ugly, like a lot of this, but it does work. And I'm simply comparing top values and bottom values of both dominoes. And the reason I use a Boolean variable instead of just returning where I make my checks is to produce a log that I have excluded in all of my examples. So let's get back to taking a turn. If I do have dominoes to play, I make a play with a random domino where my make play method gets a random free position from the domino in play if there is one. And I try to make a connection with the active domino. If it fails, I bail and we error out, stopping the game. Otherwise, I return the domino that we made a play with. And I'll get into the get random free position and try make connection methods in a moment, but let's continue with taking a turn. I'll add the play domino to the list of active dominoes if we made a play. And the result was a lot better than an error, I guess. So let me go back to the try make connection method so I can explain how I resolved the connection issues that we're seeing here. So I'm trying to connect the current domino to the other domino at the past in position. If there is already a connection at the position, I just return false. I check that I can make a connection with the other domino and return false if not. And then I go ahead and add the connection at the position for the other domino, since we should be able to make a connection. And that method is very basic. We just add the position to the list if it isn't already there. If this is a double domino being played on a normal domino, I connect it sideways from the left side if I'm connecting to a double domino, then we always connect the matching side to it. I should always be connecting from the top or bottom of a domino if no doubles are involved. Finally, I connect to the top or bottom of the other domino. And you may have noticed the overloaded make connection method. And this is where I handle the actual placement and rotation of the dominoes, which took a while to get right. I add the position to the list of the domino. If I have a connection made, I grab the connection transform from the other domino so I can align the current domino to the other domino when making the connection. And we have a few special cases that I ran into that we need to look at. So starting with the top position, from the top of my domino, if I'm connecting to the top, bottom, right, top right or bottom right of the other domino, then I need to rotate my domino 180 degrees. From the left side of my domino, if I am connecting to the top or bottom of the other domino, then I need to rotate my domino 180 degrees. Then I just set the position of the domino to the connection transform we had set up at the beginning. Now that I fixed the connection issues, we start to get something like this. So what about after playing on a double domino? Well, I use an overloaded get playable dominoes that returns a tuple. The list of playable dominoes, if any, and the domino we want to play on. Why? Well, we run into a problem where we have a list of active dominoes that can be played on and a list of playable dominoes that a player has, and we need to find a match. So I brute force my way into comparing each active domino to each domino in the player's hand until I find a match. Besides that, the rest is basically the same. And now we can see the result, but I notice we keep trying to play when there are no possible plays left. So I did add an int counter called can't play count that I increment each time I get an empty playable dominoes list. And if the can't play count is the same amount as players playing, then we stop playing. So this works and looks fine, but I'm not satisfied. This is a very small game of dominoes. What if I add more than a set of nine? Well, honestly, the only thing stopping me is the pips of the dominoes. So what if I just got rid of the pips? And then when I'm creating the domino for the set, I just say it has no pips. And in my domino start method, we only generate pips if we have pips. Easy. Let's see what happens. And of course, I added a bit of a UI to make it easy to change settings. And like you saw in the intro, I can create a cool little cinematic. Thanks for joining me and coding a very random chicken foot simulator. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.